There are two things the European dares not live by. If he tried to live by them 24 hours, he is finished. And that is Christianity and democracy. Because his civilization, his way of life, his power is based on things diametrically, compo diametrically opposed to those two things. Around here, we don't keep or cherish the holidays of our oppressors. Even so, January 1st would be a holiday regardless, no matter what, because it was on this day that the man who is, in my opinion, the greatest of our Grandmaster teachers was born. And if you do consider this to be the start of a new year, then begin it the right way by remembering those who taught you to seek a new beginning. Dr. John Henry Clark came into this world on January 1st, 1915, in Union Springs, Alabama. It's often been said that an education isn't something you get in a classroom. An education is something that you give yourself. And Dr. Clark took that to heart. An autodidact, he immersed himself in the history of his people and dedicated his life to the fight against white supremacy that now plagues us. He recognized that you cannot achieve victory over an enemy unless you understand that enemy and understand yourself. And that's why he became a historian, which, as Malcolm beautifully put it, is best qualified to reward our research. Dr. Clark's ability to breathe life, meaning, and insight into the past, combined with his unsurpassed skill in relating to the audience, gave him authority on every subject he endeavored to speak about. He gave us a number of the sayings that we routinely use, such as, All history is a current event. I only debate my equals, all others I teach. And, my personal favorite, The Essential Selfishness of Survival. And no commemoration to Dr. Clark would be complete without also mentioning his lifelong friend and colleague, Dr. Ben, both of whom spent decades in the academic and media trenches. Dr. Clark and Dr. Ben's friendship complemented each other so perfectly that even their birthdays are consecutive. Dr. Clark did so much and also contributed so much to the thought of areas that we've only now just begun to consider. For example, while we may want to think of intelligence gathering inside the black community as some novel idea, it's not. In fact, I got the idea from a lecture that Dr. Clark had given in which he mentioned in passing that back in the day, one of the organizations he had been a part of had paid out of their own pockets to send a couple of their own representatives to go to Africa and to report back to them on what was going on there. Dr. Clark knew better than to trust the white government or the white media. There is simply no substitute for having first-person, on-the-ground information being given to you by people who are operating in your interests. These things that we are ourselves still sorting out and putting on the table, Dr. Clark and his contemporaries had also addressed long ago. In fact, it was Dr. Ben who said that instead of black people being all happy that the white government gave themselves a day off and named it after Dr. King, instead of begging for a day, we should take a day. Power isn't given, it's taken. And when you make it a point to create your own holiday, that means you have to make it a point to be away from work, to plan some remembrance or other. You have to put in time, effort, and energy into it. You have to tell people about it. You have to sacrifice for it. And that makes sense. The word sacrifice comes from the Latin word sacer. It means to make holy. So when you choose of your own volition to make a holiday of your own, the sacrifice that you've made is what makes it holy, and that's why it's called a holy day or holiday. But only a people who have chosen to think and act for themselves can do that. Traditions don't start from the top down. They start from the soil, the grass roots, and permeate upwards from there. So in my own humble way, that's what I've tried to do, to reach out to the family and to emphasize how important it is to remember our heroes, our teachers, People who look like us, taught us, and fought for us. And please don't think of this as just some empty exercise. It's very easy for white power to make a holiday for Juneteenth, because that is an event without a specific central message behind it. You just say slavery ended in Texas on this date, now let's have a cookout. And people will do it without thinking. Well, Dr. Clark made it very clear why settling for empty gestures from the white government is a bad idea. He taught us that you don't ever make a demand of white supremacy that doesn't require them to give up their power. And it is the complete and utter imbalance of power that is at the heart of the evil we face today. Justice means balance. 
That's why I began yesterday's Dr. Ben Memorial Tribute with his remarks about the Supreme Court statue and the blind lady with the uneven scales. This country is based on inequality. That was the entire point of it coming into being, so white supremacy could manufacture a society that would hand them a guaranteed outcome regardless of their effort or the circumstances. Institutional injustice. That is the war that we are waging today. Fifteen years ago, I said that the mission of the black media is to take control of the cultural discourse within our community and to elevate the debate. A major part of the culture are the things we choose to honor and give esteem to. What is important to us? Who is important to us? White power will never recognize our heroes, and I don't want them to. If white power were to ever praise or lionize a Dr. Clark or a Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, then that would mean white power felt they had found a way to twist these grandmaster teachers' work and their message and to use it against us. Why would white power ever honor people who dedicated their lives to destroying white power? We don't want their approval, and best of all, we don't need it. That was the central message Dr. Clark sought to teach his people, to control the resources and the means of production, to control the land we stand on and what happens there, to leverage what the earth gives us in order to guarantee that the original man and original woman are here to stay. We have a lot of work to do. And the job is not even half done, but it has started. Remember our heroes. Culture doesn't just spring up out of the ground. People have to decide for themselves what their way of life is going to be and what it's going to mean. Dr. Clark taught us a true telling of our history. He was a true spiritual and intellectual godfather to untold masses of black people he would never meet, yet whose message they would carry forward. Dr. Clark has been more influential in death than he had been in life, and that's how you know he was a man of true consequence. Human beings are only mortal. We live for a brief moment in time, and then we're gone. No man, no matter how wise or strong, stands forever. And his deeds, no matter how great, are usually forgotten before he takes his final breath. But what that man stood for, that can endure for as long as his people exist— as long as there are those who appreciate the wisdom he had to offer. But that grand old man also bestowed on us a final gift to instill in us the mission to stand ourselves back up and move forward once more, and to do it unapologetically. What I'm saying is that we need to practice the essential selfishness of survival. All of us need to ask and answer the question, how will our people stay on this earth? How will they be fed? How will they be clothed? How will they be answered? In the asking of the question, in the seeking of the answer, maybe we will meet again at that fork of the road where we went wrong and read the signboards of history properly. And then we will straighten ourselves up and say, of course, that's the way home.